Worms are like viruses in that they self-replicate and they hide themselves, but they're a little bit different in that they typically, instead of having some type of destructive payload where they delete files off a hard drive or prevent the system from booting, they usually are worried more about sending traffic or receiving traffic or just replicating all over the place to actually consume bandwidth. They're usually more used in a denial of service type attack because when they replicate, they may just start doing broadcast traffic. They may just uh, do an ARP spoof or or some type of storm, packet storm, uh, half open attack kind of thing, which you'll learn about in different videos throughout this series. But worms are typical in that way in that they just like to do, uh, they like to self-spread, but they also just consume a lot of network bandwidth. For some folks, that means that they're not as malicious, they're not as nasty, but guess what? If you've got your network bandwidth consumption at 100% for any prolonged amount of time and you can't stop a worm from spreading, it's just as destructive as a virus because now people can't work, systems can't get accessed, and we're talking about data loss potentially, or certainly loss of productivity. So a lot of companies uh, that want an ethical hacking approach and want you to footprint their network they don't quite know what a network storm is or what network saturation is like. And you may need to actually use a worm in very limited scenarios because it is self-replicating to actually determine whether the system will be vulnerable to a worm and whether there's any way to prevent it. Attacking the target with a worm is the, virtually the same as a virus. It's just that it's even more likely to spread because all it's really doing is talking on the network. And oftentimes a lot of what it's doing on the network isn't just broadcast storming, it's self-spreading. So it has a higher focus on spreading itself even than a virus does. So it's gonna be potentially even more likely to affect more machines in a very, very fast way. There have been some uh, cases where worms have gotten loose on the internet and spread worldwide in minutes and been exceptionally difficult to stop because they're gone. By the time a network administrator sees what's going on, the worm is gone, but then it comes back and then it goes away and then it comes back again because of its self-replication process. There have been some worms that actually are completely memory resident where they don't actually store themselves on a hard drive uh, and that actually thwarts a lot of malware scanning tools or malware prevention tools because if it's not on a file, on the file system, these malware tools didn't actually detect it because it wasn't written or read. So staying in memory uh, stopped the malware prevention from taking place, and these things spread without any inhib inhibition at all, without anything blocking them from spreading and spreading and spreading. So really be careful when playing with worms not to let these things loose in anything other than a very controlled environment. And I'm going to show you that in a moment.